Welcome to our lesson video for Unit 4, Day 3. In this video, we're going to be talking about congruence and transformations. And if you're following along in the Big Ideas Dynamic Student Edition, um, that would be the Day 4.4 lesson. Um, if you remember how to get into that Big Ideas login, once you log in, click the blue Continue button to open up your Dynamic Student Edition. And make sure you select the table of contents for Chapter 4. And this is Lesson 4. Okay? So in this lesson, we're going to start by identifying congruent figures. Congruent figures are figures that have the exact same size and shape. So what I want you to do is take a minute or two and look at this graph, and I want you to identify any of these figures that would be congruent to each other. Okay, pair them up. You can color code them, you can draw arrows, or you can name them according to what they are, triangles or uh, squares or rectangles. Okay, hopefully you've taken a couple minutes to try and do this. Um, if you need more time, pause the video. Otherwise, I want you to talk with a partner and make sure that you have uh, the same answers that they do or see how you labeled things compared to how they may have labeled things. If you need more time to do this, go ahead and pause the video. Um, I do want us to look at these together though. These are the things that you should have recognized for our congruent figures. Um, if I started with this one, we might have seen uh, this triangle is congruent to its counterpart down here. They're the exact same size and shape. They have the same lengths of each sides and um, the same angles. They're the exact same size and shape. Okay, I could call the top one triangle E, F, G. And then the angles and sides that it match up to, that order kind of needs to match, it would have to be congruent to triangle KLM. Okay, those are congruent triangles. Perhaps you didn't notice that one first. Perhaps you noticed the squares first. Okay, you may have noticed this square is congruent to the other square. Okay, I could call that top one tri or square ABCD or just ABCD. That has to be congruent to its counterpart, NPQR, okay? And then finally, maybe you noticed these other triangles are actually congruent as well. Triangle IJH and this triangle are congruent. Actually, I'm going to change the way I name that. The top triangle, I'm going to name triangle HIJ. That has to be congruent to the other triangle, STU. Okay? Because those parts kind of match up together as well. But those are how I would label those triangles and squares. So you see them, that they are congruent. We know they match up to one another. Well, here's what I want to ask you. Is there a transformation that would turn this triangle into that one? You should notice that it would only require a reflection. Okay, if I reflected the top triangle over the x-axis, then I get the other triangle. Okay, so this works with a reflection over the x-axis. And then, let's look at the squares. Is there a transformation that would turn square ABCD into square NPQR? Well, hopefully you realize that would be a translation. All I have to do is move this to the left 2, down 6. Sorry, like that. So this would be a translation. To the left 2, down 6. So is there a transformation that would turn that square sorry, not the square, the, rect or the triangle, HIJ, into triangle STU. 
maybe you noticed, we could do that with a rotation. A rotation of 180 degrees. So you'll notice that these transformations we've been talking about over the last few lessons, reflections, translations, and rotations, those create figures that are congruent to the original figures. That makes them what we call congruence transformations. So for the sake of time and because we're doing this through a video, we're going to skip the self-assessment part here, and we're going to talk about what a congruence transformation is. Okay, a congruence Transformation is any transformation or series of transformations, which is what we call compositions, in which the pre-image and image are congruent. Another phrase we use for congruent transformations is the phrase rigid motions. Okay, rigid motions. So I want us to describe the congruence transformation that we might see in example two here. We've got our original um, parallelogram, ABCD. And I'm going to translate that in some way, or sorry, transform that into EFGH. Now the order of these letters is very important. A corresponds to E. B Sorry, let me go back and do that this way. B corresponds to F, and C corresponds to G, and D corresponds to H. So that's kind of important. So as you look at this, we're kind of doing two different things. One way that we could get this transformation to happen is by first reflecting the parallelogram, the blue parallelogram, over to the other side of the y-axis. So if I reflected over the y-axis, A goes to A prime, D is two away on the left now, D prime, C is four away on the left to make C prime, and B is three away to be B prime. So this reflection then can be moved to that one by a translation. Okay, so the first thing we did was a reflection over the y-axis. Then it just takes a translation of moving this point down four or any of these points down four. And that is my congruence transformation. There's two steps to it. First, we do a reflection, then we do a translation. Now, that's not the only way we could have done this. That's one way I chose to show you. What I want you to do now, before moving on to the assignment, I want you to go to the self-assessment part of the Dynamic Student Edition and Big Ideas. So make sure you go to Chapter 4, Lesson 4.4. And you're going to find the second folder. I'll actually just show you. Okay. So when you get logged in, remember we go to our Dynamic Student Edition by clicking the blue Continue button here. And then we're going to open up our table of contents to make sure we're in Lesson 4.4 here. Okay, 4.4, Congruence and Transformations. And the last example we did was a Congruence Transformation example. So I'm here in this folder here, Congruence Transformations, and we did Example 2. Okay, you'll see that there. That's the example we just did. And then this is the self-assessment piece right below that. 
okay? Self-assessment problems two through four. I want you to take some time to try and do those on your own. That way you can kind of quickly check and see if you're doing those right. And when you're done with that, you should be ready to start the assignment.